On the weekly GMBN Tech Show, we get loads of entries for top mods, which is where you upgrade your bikes and you put cool new things on. So in this video, I thought it'd be really good to show you all of the GMBN and EMBN presenters' bikes because we've all made a whole bunch of top mods. First up, let's take a look at my daily bike. Okay, so for my top mods, as you can see, this is my Canyon Euron, and it's not quite stock as it is because I'm always playing around with some new bits and pieces on there. At the moment, I've got the latest Crank Brothers Highline dropper post. That's the 170 drop on there. The cockpit is a little bit different on mine to the stock item though. I always swap the bars around on bikes. I'm quite picky. So I've actually got the lowest rise in the Sam Hill Nootproof bar on this bike and it's a full 800 mil width. That's my preference on there. Grips are quite interesting. When I was visiting Ergon to make the video on how they produce saddles, I actually did a little bit of behind the scenes testing, trying out some different compounds. Um, these look like a production grip, but the compound of the rubber is extremely soft. So that's something quite cool. I'm running the 60 mil Horizon stem. It's got quite a low stack height. It suits me being able to get this down nice and low on the bike, but still retain a little bit of rise on the bar just for the feel, because I like to roll my bars forwards. I've also got a chain master link taped onto the front brake hose. Uh, pretty much always have that on all of my bikes in the relevant speed. This is 12 speed, some other bikes are 11 speed. Uh, and a Garmin mount on the top there. Pretty much ride with a Garmin all the time these days. Life has changed. And the biggest talking point, of course, will be the fork on here. Um, Curiosity killed the cat. I just wanted to give it a try just to see what it was like. This, of course, is Trust Performance Fork called The Message. Uh, it's a very obscure looking fork. It's a trailing link design. Axle path goes rearwards before it goes up slightly, meaning when you ride it into stuff, it just literally eats up bumps. It's a completely different approach to most suspension. Your geometry actually doesn't change much under compression either. And interestingly, the trail increases so it gets more stable through compression. Unlike Henry, I quite like running a rear tire that has a little less traction and a bit faster rolling. I tend to go out riding long days out on a bike like this and it's a kind of my preference really. So the casing on the Mountain King isn't quite as strong as the Trail King that I like on the front. So I'm running the new Proof Art system on there. Now also interestingly, you might notice I've got a bit of a homemade chainstay protector here. Now this is made from two layers of Scotch 3M Mastic rubber, it's 228. If you want to look that one up, it comes in 25 and 50 millimeter widths. And I've actually got some old handlebar grips, so I've snipped bits of rubber off, helping make the wavy bits. So it's almost like a dual compound chainstay protector. It's completely silent. The bike makes no noise now, which I absolutely love. Uh, and finally, I've got currently an elite bottle cage on there with a Topic pump on the side, which basically stays on my bike. It's fit and forget. I would use the Topic Ninja cage with the built-in multi-tool, but it doesn't actually fit in the lower mount, which is what I like to use so I can have the bigger bottle. Can use it in a higher mount, but it's a bit of a bit of an issue with where the shock is. So that one works out well for me. But uh, yeah, there you go. There's a few of my top mods that make my bike a little bit different to the rest. Okay, a bit of an alternative twist now. Let's throw over to Chris Smith from EMBN. Cool, thanks for that, Doddy. So let's take a look at my specialized Kinevo e-bike. Now, this is the bike I use for all the big free ride stuff, the dirt jump in. It's a real capable bike, 180 mil travel, front and rear. So let's take a look at a few of the top mods. Starting at the top, I trim my bars down to 780 millimeters rather than the stock 800. It gives me a little bit more clearance in the cockpit for things like bar spins. And believe it or not, those bars have hit me in the knees and stopped more than once and caused some big over the bar. So keep those trimmed down nice and short. Obviously got the front brake routed through the front, uh, fork steerer for those bar spins as well, so it just lets the handlebars spin nice and easy. And maybe one day I'll be brave enough to actually do a tail whip. And obviously at the front of the bike, these cables have actually been lengthened to allow the bars to spin as well. Other things, uh, the suspension on this bike has been modified as well. We've got the, actually the heaviest spring that Olin's do. It's a 708 weight spring. It's got an upgraded spring clip on the shock as well, and a lot more compression on that rear shock than a standard rider as well, purely for those aerial maneuvers. And lastly, I think there's just the wheels have been upgraded to the uh, DT Swiss HX 1501s are a lot stronger than the standard Roval wheel set that comes on this bike. Again, you need strong wheels if you're going to be hammering an e-bike just like this. And more importantly, back over to GMBN Tech here, and this one's for Henry. This is my Nuke Proof Reactor 290. Um, the things that make it mine, or maybe make it stand out, would probably be the power meter on there, which is something that's just nice to use when you ride, and also will hopefully help me include some kind of metrics when we do comparisons on the channel. 
Interestingly enough, I've got some beautiful guide ultimate brakes with 180 mm rotors front and back. I wanted to keep this feeling really like a trail bike. Similarly, I've gone for the Barons also, which although quite aggressively treaded, are indeed quite light. Good old tube to get me out of trouble and some FSA carbon gradient wheels. And to accompany the 29 inch wheels, I've actually gone for a very, very, very small 32 chain ring, but it just suits my riding and that's all that matters to me. Good to go. And king of the workshop, Steve Jones. Yeah, nice one, Doddy. Uh, do you know, I pretty much run my bikes as stock. The main thing I change them is the tires. Now, depending on the weather conditions and where I'm riding, uh, that would be my number one upgrade, which I can recommend to you guys. Here in the UK, from about October through till March, I pretty much run uh, mud tires or 50-50 tires, which is something like a Maxxis Shorty. Uh, today we're going to be riding trail centre, so I've opted for a more dry weather setup such as a Minion and an Asagai on the back. That's a super grippy tyre because if you're riding e-bikes, you're going to be doing lots of climbing, so you really need some bite on that tyre. And also, it's a very uh, robust tyre for all the sense, the rock and the route which we ride here on my local trails. There are actually a couple of special parts on my bike which I didn't mention. First thing is an e-bike specific saddle. Now, if you look at the shape of that, it's got a bit of a tilt at the back, which means it helps you when you're going up those really steep climbs to get stuck into the seat and get all that grip onto the rear tire. The fork's not stock as well. That's a, uh, a e-bike specific Fox 36 in there. I do tend to fiddle around my forks a little bit and also as you can see there's a mud gut in there and I think that is crucial to uh, keep your vision when you're on the trail keep all the mud out your eyes and also if you think about it there's a lot of bacteria which you can find on the trails which is probably not good for you for going into your into your mouth while you're riding hey Doddy and over to our very own trick monkey Blake Sampson welcome to my top mods and this is my nuke proof reactor Right, my first top mod is this graphic on the top of my top tube right here. This is an all mountains graphics kit up here. This is the Maori one, but I have butchered the GMBN one, which you can buy in our store. Nice to protect your frame, but I've taken the black GMBN logo out there just to add to that Maori logo. And I love it how the white goes with this nice, nice bluish color. Unlike Doddy, unlike Neil, and unlike Henry, I like to run my suspension quite hard. So I've pumped up my suspension quite hard on the rear and on the front. Now in the rear, I've maxed out on some tokens and in the front, I've put in a few in there as well, some volume spaces just to make this suspension a little bit hard. But when I do ride rough terrain, I do take one out or I just lower that pressure down so it makes it a little bit more supple. But I do tend to use my lockouts quite a lot. As you can see, this one's fully locked out already. And on the front, well, I'm a few clicks open on everything just to make it a little bit more plush on the front. Now, moving on to my next mod is tire choice. Now that's a key one for me because I'm an aggressive rider and I'm not too worried about rolling speed and all that jazz. I just want a tire that gives me maximum grip out there and an aggressive one as well. So I've gone for the Continental De Barons, a 2.4. It's a 27.5 wheel build on this beast. So I've gone for these tires because they're super aggressive, loads of grip, lightweight as well, but give me a lot more grip and I run them front and rear. My next mod is on my pedals. Now these are my Crank Brothers stamp pedals. You do get two different sizes. I go for the small one because I got a size eight foot. I want a small one where I know where my feet are. Now what I've done with these pedals, I've stuck in the biggest pins you can get and I can guarantee they are grippy, but when your foot does break loose, you get a big hole in the back of your calf. That's the only issue with them, but I do like a, an aggressive pedal because I want my feet to be on that pedal in that rough stuff, and I want them to be bouncing off with those small little pins. I want a big pin, so it digs up into those North Wave shoes of mine. Okay, cockpit time. Now, bar width. My mod on this is I do cut them down from 800 mil. On this bike, I'm running 780 uh, to 770 is my minimum, but I run that size bar throughout all my bikes. I don't want a really small bar, apart from a jump bike. That one is 750 to 760, just because I do bar spins with that bike and I don't want such a huge bar. And also, my grip choice. Again, I'm an aggressive rider, so everything needs to be aggressive. So I've got the downhill grips on here, and they're the thick, fat size grip. These are the GD1s from Ergon. They come in two different sizes. You get a thin and you get a fat. I've gone for the fat grip on these in orange. And I think it does match my Fox logos quite well. Um, again, 
I tend to run with a Garmin quite a lot. Like Doddy, he runs one all the time. For myself, I do use it on my trail bike only because this bike is more so for pedaling than going downhill a lot. I, use, I leave that to my Mega and my Strive. Whereas this, I kind of leave my Garmin on here. So I've got the nice Garmin bar mount just for it. So it sticks right in the middle of the stem. It looks quite clean and neat and I like that. Also another little mod that what I did to this bike is I moved my cables around. As you can see on the rear, I've moved the, the rear from the right of the bike to the left. And it basically gives it a nice shorter and I can cut those cables down a lot to make it a little bit more neater, which I like that. And yeah, I kept all these little grips as well just to keep my cables from sp you know, spraying out like spaghetti junction. And finally, it's over to the Don. This is my Canyon Strive, a bike that I ride an awful lot. A um, couple of upgrades, I've put some FSA gradient wheels in there. They're the carbon rim, the wider ones as well, so it gives you a nice big profile. On my Continental Barons, which I run pretty much all year round. I know they are wintery tires, but I just like them pretty much for dry and for the wet, so very good. Uh, Crank Brothers, I put a 170 mil drop highline post on there because I can get away with it. You can see I've got a little bit of space left over. I've put some of that uh, shrink wrap around all these cables because you've got the shape shift cables going into there, so it just tidies that up nicely. Uh, I've got a little nice Garmin mount there, made by Muteproof, that one, so it goes directly on top of your stem. Put a bit of uh, grip tape on my shifter, and I've got those thin, you can get these Ergon GD1 grips in, thin or thick, I really like thin grips. Oh, well there we go, that is some of the top mods that we make to our own bikes, just to make them a little bit different from the stock ones you can buy in the shops, and more importantly, a little bit different to each other's. Uh, we'd love to know what you think, whose is your favorite bike of the lot, what modifications did you love the most, what did you really not like? Uh, I'm guessing some of you might say something about my forks. Uh, let us know in the comments underneath here, I'd uh, love to hear from you guys as always. Uh, don't forget to share and subscribe to our content, click the little notification bell, and for another video, click right there.